Is this all you got? A pair of single dumbbells, 30 pounds in this case, and you're thinking you're not going to get a good workout in because it's certainly not heavy enough to challenge some of your stronger muscle groups. Today I'm going to show you exactly what to do and more importantly, arm you with the right techniques to make these guys feel two or even three times heavier. What's up guys, Jeff Cavalier, AthleteNext.com. A 30 pound dumbbell. Maybe you went out and you bought a set of these from Walmart one day thinking you're going to have that all purpose weight that you can use for the majority of your exercises to train at home. Maybe you don't have access to a gym or maybe even you're at a gym and all the heavy weights are being taken at the moment and you are short on time. Could you actually get a good workout in with 30 pounds? You could if you use the techniques I'm going to show you here today. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to show you an exact workout that you could do with these dumbbells to employ those techniques. So what you want to do to get started is look at the major muscle groups that you would train in a full total body workout like we're going to do here today. You've got your shoulders, your legs, your chest, your back, and your arms, biceps and triceps. Now, that dumbbell weight might be more appropriate for certain muscle groups than others. Obviously, right off the bat, legs are going to be able to handle a hell of a lot more weight than let's say your arms are. So the way to break this down is to consider the exercises that you're choosing and how close those are to the normal weight that you would be using. So if I'm normally going to use 30 pounds on let's say a dumbbell curl or maybe 35 pounds or 40 pounds, I'm pretty close with the 30s. So the technique that I would have to use to intensify those 30s to bring them up a little bit will be different than the intensity technique I have to use on a heavier exercise like a squat to make that infinitely harder. So here's the workout. So to kick it all off, we start with our arms, right? The smaller muscle groups that are closest to the weight we probably will be using for these exercises anyway. But we can go further than that. We can make this 30 pound weight even heavier by first and foremost eliminating momentum. So I back up to a wall to perform a bicep wall curl. And what I do is I perform a technique called the one and a half reps. Now what I do by doing the one and a half reps is I force more time under tension and I get rid of the momentum even more. So I can't lean forward and back as I could if I was doing this away from the wall. And because of the fact that I have to reinitiate a rep when I'm used to just letting it drop, that makes me use my contraction of the biceps even more and I don't have the opportunity to use that swinging momentum. The next thing I could do is a dumbbell lying tricep extension. I could do it the same exact way with one and a half reps. Again, I make this 30 pound weight heavier, something that maybe I'm more used to using. I could do 45s, I could do 50s here, but I only have 30s and so do you and that's the predicament we're in right now. But by doing one and a half reps, I can make those weights feel a lot heavier and target the triceps a lot harder with that lighter weight. Okay, moving on, we now have the chest and shoulders, two muscle groups that kind of equate well in terms of the weight that we would normally use in its relation to the 30 pound dumbbells that we're stuck with. And you can see here that the 30 pound dumbbells are probably lighter than even half of what we would normally use. Maybe you're, you would be normally benching 70 pounds or, or even 75 pounds, but it's, it's a bigger jump than it would be, say, to your arms. So what we want to do is employ a different technique. In this case, pre-exhaustion into even slow motion reps is one of the best combinations you can have to intensify the weight and allow you to get a really good workout with this pair of dumbbells. So we have here this uh, combination of a variation of a push-up. When I'm using the dumbbells here, I, obviously I can get a little bit of a deeper stretch on the chest as I come down, but then as I come up, I can actually roll them together just a little bit to increase the activation of the pecs. I do this until failure. Immediately stand up and go into this variation here of our bench press. And I'm going to actually, again, increase the activation of the chest by squeezing the dumbbells together the entire time. Activate the adduction component of a chest press to allow me to really, really fire up the chest as much as I can. And because we pre-exhausted it with the exercise before, this becomes infinitely harder. This doesn't feel like 30 pound dumbbells, trust me. And your weight, your muscles cannot count what's on the weight. They don't know what number is written on the dumbbell. They only know what it feels like. And I can tell you this will feel a lot heavier. For the shoulders, we can do the same thing. We can take those 30 pound dumbbells and actually do an exercise here that is actually very difficult with 30 pounds, but it's a good pre-exhauster as well. It's a shoulder L raise. So we're going to get the components of a front dumbbell raise and a side dumbbell raise, and we go out as many reps as we can. Once we reach failure, we realize that, yeah, maybe I could press 60 pound dumbbells and 30 pounds would have been light, but not anymore. I go immediately from the L raise to a shoulder press overhead, and those are a lot, lot harder, but we can even change the way we do it by doing the wide arc dumbbell press. Here I can intensify the contraction of the delt by allowing my arms to travel a little bit more wide, and then up overhead, pushing my thumbs together and getting the dumbbells to actually touch and push together at the top just a little bit, 
to prolong that time under tension once again. And if you want to slow down the reps even more, you could do all of these in slow motion style just to sort of drag out that time under tension even more and make those weights feel heavy. And then we finish with those two muscle groups you probably thought, uh-uh, there's no way you're going to make these feel heavy. I can squat 250 pounds, I can squat 300 pounds, there's no way you're going to make 30 pound dumbbells challenging for me. Not so fast. The first thing that you want to do here when you're training your legs is to try to split up the load. So now we're going to take one leg at a time. Instantly we've allowed the load to become heavier. Right? We're not distributing it over two legs. Now we want to do a dumbbell Bulgarian split squat and we're going to do it in landmine plyo fashion. So we're going to make it explosive and we're going to do something all important here called a stop ladder. This technique will intensify any exercise, trust me. And you jump off the ground, land slow, come down to the bottom and hold it for a single second. Now you come up for your second rep, land and you hold it for two seconds. And then you come up for your third rep. You do your third rep, explode, come down, hold the bottom position for three seconds. That increased time under tension, that is going to catch up to you. And you might find that you might not even be able to make it to 12 reps that you normally would be able to make on a much heavier dumbbell because of that increased time under tension, that accrued time under tension over time. Now we move on to the back. And again, we're in that same situation where our back is usually capable of handling heavy loads. But not if we tweak and use the same technique here. Set up an incline bench and go on it reverse. Now you're going to go with your chest down, arms hanging down, and you're going to do a row. Now the row here again is hard. It's hard enough because we've eliminated momentum by putting ourselves flat down against the, uh, the, the bench itself. So we have to do this without any assisted momentum that we could get from a standing row. After we do a single rep, we hold the dumbbells up in that con uh, position, contracting our uh, mid scapular muscles as hard as we possibly can. Lower down, come up for the second rep, hold for two seconds, and down and up for three seconds. Continue again in this stop letter fashion, and you'll be able to see again, light weights can become heavy if you know how to move those light weights in the first place. So there you have it. Consider this sort of your dumbbell survival guide. No matter where you are, no matter what you're stuck with, no matter what your budget has limited you to in terms of the array of dumbbells that you have at your disposal, there's always something you can do to make them feel heavier and therefore work more when you lift them. If you're looking for a program that gets rid of all the excuses, shows you what to do step by step, head to athlinex.com right now and get our athlinex training program. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful and you liked it and you want to see more like this, make sure you leave your comments and thumbs up below. I'll do my best to cover what you guys ask for here on this channel each and every week. All right, guys. I'll see you soon.